Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update by RRG Research for Monday 8th of August and I'm recording this on Friday the 5th of August. My name is Trevor Neal and I'm presenting to you from London. Let's start with a quick look at what's going on in the major stock markets of the world as we do every week. Many commentators have picked up on the drive of the US stock market's recent advance, something that we had seen early. We'll continue with our observation of the tech on FANG stocks leading the pack, and we'll fo focus on particular um, and look drill down to one particular stock. The first relative rotation graph shows the rotation of a group of international stock market indices versus, in the center here, zero return. So most often we, in the past, we've looked at the, the leading stock market indices versus the MSCI World Index. So we're looking at the indices versus a index of the world. So how are they doing versus the index of the world? But here we're using this benchmark of zero annual return. So this is how a stock market is doing as an asset class. We see that everything except for one is in the leading quadrant so stocks are doing well worldwide we see both europe and and the united states and other stock indices in populating this quadrant they have turned over a bit since last week and all of them are pointing down which means that they we've got declining relative momentum rs momentum but still there's they are far to the right and strong. So as an asset class, as a group, compared to cash, it's a good investment, except in the case of the saying sits alone and in the most horrible place, the lagging quadrant with very poor relative performance and also very poor momentum also. So this means generally we can say that stocks are doing well, both absolutely, not just relatively compared to the global index. In recent reports, we had focused on the Eurostox 50. Last week, it was poised to break this resistance at 3,600. We noticed that the momentum was strong there and the likelihood was good that it would make the break. And last it, during the week, it has powered ahead very strongly with other stock markets, got to be said. But this one in particular looks nice. It has broken the downtrend line, which has existed since the first day of January. And we've got a number of tops in place, lower highs. We've broken through it, I would say, with a gap. Also a very strong break, long bar and powered ahead. Notice also the momentum is very strong here. So what we look at, we've got this good base here from 3,400 up to 3,600. Breakout, break of the trend line, pushing ahead. What resistance have we got? We've got some resistance at 3,800 ahead of us, but that is not substantial resistance compared to some of the other indices. But so far this has been good and it's got light resistance above it. How does the Eurostox 50 compare to the US 500, the SPX index? It's had a very strong week too, broken this downtrend line. Now this resistance is quite strong in, in, in the case of the S&P. We've got low, low break, rally, what was support became resistance and then savage uh, sell off here and now rally to this resistance. For, so this 4,150 level represents strong resistance, which could slow up the advance of this particular index, which is one of a group of indexes which are strong performing strongly. It has got strength to it. The MACD is very positive here in this daily uh, chart, but it's got some headwind in it. Let's look at the tech stocks, the NASDAQ, the, uh, the Tech 100 index. It has already cleared this resistance point and, and has broken through the previous support points here. And we 
hesitated, then we broke down, those support points became resistance, rallied close to it, not quite to it, up to 12,800, not up to 13,000, and then fell away sharply, and then has now broken through both those resistance levels, 12,800 and the 13,000, let's call it 13,100 uh, level. They've both been cleared. So all the downtrend lines have been cleared on this. We've got an uptrend line uh, dominating. So the tech is, uh, is the power house of the broad, more broadly based Nasdaq. Here we see that the MACD is uh, powering ahead as it has been from close after the lows, but the gap is widening between the MACD and its signal line. This in indicates increasing momentum. Now this relative rotation graph shows the what used to be called the FANG stocks. That's not a good acronym now for the group, but these are the tech stocks. Now you see here, it's a, not a universal story here of every he, everything heading northeast. It is not the case at all. So what we've got is, we've got uh, using the benchmark of the S&P 500, we've got Netflix, Facebook, Nvidia, Tesla and Apple all heading in a northeasterly direction. That means easterly, increasing uh, JDKK strength ratio, sorry, and then uh, also heading northerly. This means that the momentum of the ratio is also increasing. So this is a good direction, but they're all in the improving quadrant. So this is an opportunity. So this is gaining power and not yet outperforming the, the index, the S&P itself. Okay? And Twitter both to the right of 100 here, but the direction here is perhaps less attractive. There's nothing wrong with them, but the opportunity is in the improving area here. So we've got all these in there. We've got a clear message on what not to be involved in amongst the tech stocks. Google heading in absolutely the wrong direction. It's heading southwesterly, westerly meaning meaning declining performance, and then southerly also poor momentum of that performance too. Amazon is improving, but it's way, way over on the left hand side here of underperformance. So this is where the opportunity area lies. What should we look at to try and capitalize on the opportunity of the, the FANG group of technology stocks? The individual stock in the leading quadrant here with the longest tail, so making the most progress furthest away from zero and pointing in this uh, northeasterly direction is Netflix. This chart shows Netflix, it's a daily chart of Netflix and which has that highest RS momentum. It is also rising and pointing to the right. So this is the best, relatively the best of that group in the improving quadrant. It's not yet outperforming the group as a whole, but it is looking like it's heading towards that direction. So we see this daily chart here. It forms a big base below 205, and we traded really from April below there, following the dreadful subscriber fi figures, which gave us that big gap sell off there. Now we've broken the 205 level and we're pushing up. This makes this a very substantial base. Very interesting that on the MACD here, it never actually crossed down during this consolidation period. Now looking ahead of us, if it continues to make progress from this big base, we've got the gap here, the gap from that shock results. So the, the gap was from 250 up to all the way up to 340. Literally no trading took place there. There are no profit takers or anybody like that. It plummeted from 340 down to 250 without touching the sides. So this means it's got no resistance until we get up to 340. It's edging towards, I know it's maybe losing a little bit of momentum, but it's edging towards a very significant break point. So breaking of this high here, 248, could release a great deal of energy as we punch into this gap here. We see this FANG stock, in, which is in the improving quadrant, and it has such potential in the chart that it is really worth your attention, I would say at the very least, within the context of strong stocks generally. Some head, headwinds for the broadly based S&P, but the technology sector itself is looking strong. I'll leave it to there for this week, drawing your attention to Netflix, a very interesting chart within the technology sector within the 
stock indices which are themselves performing very well on an absolute basis. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be with you again the same time next week and the same place. Goodbye from Julius and I of RRG Research and may the trend be with you.